earlier this week I received a message from a physician in Michigan and she was asking specifically about the way I perform phlebectomy, the surgical extraction of varicose veins. She says, I notice that you mark the veins for phlebectomy with the patient standing. Why do you do this? And I can't help wondering whether when the patient lies down for treatment that the marks may shift in relation to the vein. Well, that's a good question. And the reason I mark the veins with the patient standing is that the veins are often most noticeable and most protuberant with the patient standing as the veins fill under the influence of gravity. I've not had a problem with the marks on the skin shifting in relation to the vein when lying uh, the patient down. I like to mark the veins on either side with an indelible marking pen and then I perform the phlebectomy in between the marks. There is a theoretical risk that if you perform the phlebectomy uh, straight over the marks that you might actually tattoo the skin. So that's why I mark on either side of the vein. She also asks, with regard to the actual punch biopsy uh, that you use to extract the vein, does it not damage the vein and make it more difficult to remove? Well, having applied the local anaesthetic solution generously, the skin is often lifted, or should be lifted, away from the vein, so that when the punch is made, the vein is some distance away from the skin and it is not damaged by the uh, biopsy instrument. In fact, it's difficult to push the punch biopsy very far into the skin. It has a limiter, so the punch cannot go too far into the skin and into the surrounding tissues below. She also goes on to ask, um, I have heard of phlebologists performing foam sclerotherapy before phlebectomy. Does the foam extravasate and damage the tissues when phlebectomy is performed? Well, I've been performing phlebectomy in association with foam sclerotherapy for many years now, and this is not a problem that causes any consequences. I usually perform foam sclerotherapy under ultrasound guidance prior to performing phlebectomy because the application and administration of tumescent local anaesthetic will obscure the ultrasound appearance of the vein and make it very difficult to perform foam sclerotherapy. After the tumescence is applied to the veins, it will naturally compress the vein emptying it of blood and any foam sclerosant solution. And the fact that the tumescent local anaesthetic also has adrenaline in it means that the veins will vasoconstrict and empty. So although you might think that once you've performed phlebectomy, the foam sclerosant will extravasate and cause problems, in practice, after performing many thousands of phlebectomies in the presence of foam sclerosant, this is not proven to be a problem. The next question she asks is, do you use bicarbonate with your tumescent local anaesthetic solution? Well, I use the classical Klein's formulation for tumescent local anaesthetic. And it was Klein who observed that the addition of adrenaline to the local anaesthetic solution reduces the pH and makes the, pain, the, the injection of the solution much more uncomfortable and in some cases painful. By adding bicarbonate to the solution, we can neutralize this acidity and the injections are much more comfortable. In addition, by changing the pH, the onset of action of the local anesthetic is reduced and so the area is numbed much more quickly. Rachel also goes on to ask, uh, when do you perform your phlebectomy in relation to other treatments and how much of a delay do you have between phlebectomy and the treatments that you perform? Well, I very rarely perform phlebectomy on its own. 
phlebectomy is usually performed in association with other treatments. For truncal reflux, my preference is to perform an endovenous thermal ablation by radiofrequency ablation or laser. And I perform this under tumescent local anaesthetic. More recently, I have also been treating truncal reflux with uh, venocele by Safion, which is an intravascular cyanoacrylate glue, which bonds the vein shut instantly and which does not require the use of tumescent local anaesthetic nor the use of compression hosiery or bandaging afterwards. At the same time as performing truncal ablation, I usually also perform foam sclerotherapy and phlebectomy in that order at the same session. Where endothermal ablation or venous seal is not appropriate, I usually treat veins by a combination of ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy and phlebectomy under local anaesthetic in that order at the same session. Well I hope that answers your questions Rachel and thank you for your interest.